Hello and welcome to The Print. I'm Akanksha Mishra and this is Scientifix where I will be taking you through this week's top science news from across the world. Our first story today is a bit of a throwback. If you remember, in September 2024 in Scientifix, we had mentioned how Earth would have a mini moon for two months. An asteroid called 2024 PT5 was pulled in by the Earth's gravitational force and orbited the planet almost like a moon between September to November last year. Now, a group of scientists from NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory have found that this asteroid might actually be a piece of rock ejected from our original moon thousands of years ago. Scientists were curious about this asteroid because the orbit that it followed while circling the Earth is not one that's commonly associated with asteroids from the main asteroid belt of our solar system. Then, they obtained images of PT-5 using NASA's infrared telescope facility and found that its properties did not match any previous asteroid samples. But it instead matched our existing lunar sample. It was rich in silicate minerals exactly like the moon's surface. The NASA scientists are calling this a rare kind of study where asteroids are leading them towards uncovering the history of the moon. Our next story today is about a novel study and a rare win for citizen science when over a thousand people from 32 different European countries participated in an experiment to collect data on cowslip plants. These common flowering plants are found across Europe and have two unique flowers which allow for both self-pollination and pollination via insects. But scientists from the University of Tartu, Estonia, in a study in the Journal of Ecology, have found that because of warmer climates and greater land use change, the insect pollinated flowers are decreasing and self-pollinated flowers have 9% higher presence. How did they find this? Well, the scientists enlisted the help of European citizens through a website which asked them to observe cowslips around them, take pictures and upload them on a single portal with their coordinates. Over four years, from 2019 to 2022, around 900,000 cowslips across Europe were observed. Moving on to the next story, ground-level ozone exposure has long been known to cause health issues in humans. But a new study on 22nd January shows how it causes hypoxia and arterial stiffness because of the deficiency of oxygen in the body. The study was conducted in China's Qinghai Tibetan Plateau on residents that were exposed to high concentrations of ozone. The gas, which helps humans as a layer in the atmosphere, becomes deadly when it comes to the ground. The scientists found that even mild short-term exposure to ozone for 1-7 to seven days leads to oxygen saturation in the body and an increase in red blood cells count. This paper is especially pertinent when we look at the fact that ground ozone levels in India, in New Delhi particularly, are very high. For 176 days in the summer of 2024, Delhi's ground oxygen levels were higher than the recommended safety standards according to a study by the Centre for Science and Environment. Finally, our last story today is about a fossil of a pterosaur, the first flying vertebrates in the world. This particular pterosaur fossil, dated to 70 million years ago, was found with a bite mark on its neck bone from what scientists say is a crocodile-sized animal. A paper published in Cambridge University Press on 23rd January said that the pterosaur fossil, discovered in Alberta, Canada, has a 4 mm bite mark, which is quite rare because pterosaur bones are very delicate. The bite mark from a crocodilian is indicative of what kind of animals interacted with each other in the Cretaceous period. And it's especially interesting because crocodilians and pterosaurs are both very close relatives and are considered to be the ancestors of modern day birds. There's more to be unearthed about how the bite mark got onto the fossil and whether it occurred when the pterosaur was alive or dead. But scientists do say that it won't be surprising if it's found that pterosaurs are part of the primary diet of crocodilians in that period in history. That's all we have for today. Thank you for tuning into The Print.